Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another great version of Racers News Network Live. We are going to be talking with our guest, Jamie Diamond, in just a couple of seconds. Uh, but I just want to let everybody know, again, for a while, we're going to do the interview, recording it on Zoom, and then I'm going to put the, uh, put it on our YouTube page, and then I will share the YouTube link. So everybody will get to see everything. It's just going to take a little while. It's going to be like this until... Uh, I figured out the date. It is December 19th of this year. So happy, happy, joy, joy. Welcome to the great new world of soft people that we live in. Uh, but again, our guest tonight, Jamie Diamond. Uh, Pete may be joining us. He is continuing his college education because uh, as everybody knows, he now is a school teacher as well. So he has to take X amount of um, credits each year to keep his certification. And he's doing that right now. He's taking an algebra class. Lucky him. The Lion Automotive instructor needs algebra. And we were trying to figure that one out, but we couldn't get anywhere with it. But um, so again, the past couple of weeks has been the uh, the wrap up of the bracket racing stuff uh, throughout the country. They were in Vegas and we have one of our division one reps joining us tonight. Of course, I'm talking about Jamie Diamond. Good evening, Jamie. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So I, lo I looked up your points. You finished eighth at Lebanon Valley. And that qualified you to go to the bracket finals. You went to the bracket finals. You won that. And that qualified you to go to Vegas, correct? Yep. So is this your first journey to the bracket finals out on the West Coast? First journey to the world finals in Vegas, yeah, or, or Pomona. So... I've run the bracket finals for division one here probably seven or eight times. And the best I've finished before this year was uh, fifth round and fortunate enough to win it this year. So that got us out to Vegas. Very cool. Now, obviously it's, it's a huge experience, not only having one to get your car out there to get yourself and your family out there, but just being in that atmosphere. What, what is that atmosphere like? You know, I, I tried to take it all in, but when it came time to race, I was just focused on everything, on, on the racing. And people said, wow, it must be cool to be in the car with the fans in the stands and the mountains out there are beautiful. And you know what? I didn't even notice any of that. It was uh, just focusing on what I had to do. And you mentioned getting my car out there. I actually didn't. So uh, after I won, I tried to find a ride for my car. Because um, like you were saying with Pete, I work in education as well. I can't take two weeks off in the middle of the school year to go out west to get my car out there. Right. So I, I, I wanted my car. I looked for a spot in a trailer for guys that were already going. Couldn't come up with anything. So then I started making some phone calls and, and trying to make some connections. And um, I got hooked up with a guy named Shane Thompson, who is from Las Vegas and has some bracket cars. And he was nice enough to put me in his car, which was a beautiful car, 2021 race tech, uh, really nice stuff. Cool. Uh, now, what's it like? Did that add another curve to the whole thing? Um, totally. From, you know, your, your totally. hot rod into somebody else's car? So the concern with my car was obviously if, if I brought it, I would have to come up with a fuel tune up. Um, I'm mechanically injected, so I'm not a carburetor where it's going to tune itself. So I'd have to figure that out. So uh, I was kind of looking at it as, well, if I got a car that's already out there, it's already set up. I know it's going to get down the track because we only had three time trials. Yeah. So, um, you know, I didn't want to be wasting time trials with my car. So I hopped in that car first time ever being in it, ever being down in Vegas. Um, I was a little, little late on the tree. The first hit, it was 29 and it went uh, 728 at 183 actually the first hit was 181 it's the first time that car had run quarter mile in a while and then uh the next day it came out and ran a couple of 722s at 183 Very so cool. definitely another curveball um hitting the tree in a new car it's set up similar to mine but a little bit different no starting line enhancer so get got used to that um second hit i was triple zero so that was like well what do i do with the box now you know so it was a challenge, but it was a good challenge. It was fun. We were competitive. Very cool. Now, well, let's back up a little bit. and Let's let's talk about your year leading up to your point finish and then your, your win at um, Maple Grove for the bracket finals. Oh, the year was a tough one. Um, 
my car in June, I don't know, six or seven points race it was 749 in the time shot. And then I uh, like to switch first round. All that's got in it is a 765. And I chased that for three, four weeks. It was, uh, it was down 15 hundredths and five miles an hour, six miles an hour, like 50 horsepower. And I changed everything front to back. I changed the transmission, torque converter, ignition, wiring, coil, spark plug, spark plug wires, you name it. Um, for, I always thought it was a fuel issue. So first I started riching it up with the pill, didn't change it. So after struggling for weeks, I, I changed the nozzles and my fuel tune up. I, I put bigger nozzles in it and all of a sudden the car ran good again. And I still don't know why, it's still not fixed, um, but putting those bigger nozzles in made it run just fine. So after that, you know, I, I lost a couple of weeks of racing. And during that time, a good friends of ours, Alan Carroll Gauthier, they, they let me drive his hot for teacher, hot uh, race car. It's an Ed Quay car, beautiful car, uh, nice driving car too, consistent. And we had that car running really good. So I go three rounds in that. I win the third round and blow the motor up in that. It's like, it was just really, really a low, low time. Uh, that actually, I, was, I remember that. It was July 4th because uh, we blew the motor up on a Sunday. We took the whole thing apart Sunday afternoon and I uh, get home and I test. I got COVID. So like 15 of us at the track that weekend got COVID. And it's like, what a ride. So then a couple of weeks later, I finally, I didn't fix my car, but I got it running good, obviously. And I uh, was able, I think I went to a semi towards the end of the season and, uh, you know, got that eighth in points and the car was running good like normal end of the year it was consistent fast and um yeah so bracket finals what a time we got down there it was raining what was it raining on thursday we had one one time shot that was it friday we unloaded and uh the car was good i think i went second round i had a guy throw a uh 2000s package total at me so that ended my day in the second round of the gambler's race. I mean, I was good, good on the tree, but he was better. You know, how are you going to beat a two pack? Um, right. I guess with a one pack. <laughs> so <laughs> then, uh, Saturday morning race day, we got up and, uh, had, uh, the car was good. I was good. I mean, my worst light in eliminations, what was a 20 with the buy run? Um, but with a guy in the other lane was a 14 and the best of eliminations was a double Oh one and the fourth, round which got me the buy in the fifth so i had to buy into the semi and in the semi i got a little lucky uh, i had zach byron he's real tough and he caught me early he was ripping it i just had a feeling my car was slow for whatever reason it slowed up a little and uh usually i'd let him go cut him loose but i just kept my foot right in it and he gave it back three foul and that was my lucky round that set up the the final and um with the car slowing up, I wasn't really sure, you know, why I got in a different lane in the final. I had been running the left lane. I, I got in the right. I lost the coin toss and, uh, you know, I dialed up for, for the run before and, um, I was able to slow it up. I, I think I slowed it up three hundredths. The final was a double Oh nine and then, uh, dead on with a three four seventy three with a three. So, uh, it was running the four seventy. So I don't know why it slowed up in the semi, but, that's racing. Very cool. Well, it's not a bad year at all, though. I mean, all, all things considered, you made it to, you know, the bracket, the bracket finals, big show. Oh, very fortunate. I mean, uh, very challenging year struggles, but, uh, you know, it's fun for me. I enjoy the challenge. I enjoy the struggle to some extent. I mean, what fun would it be if you just hit the key and it worked every time, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, what, what do you teach? So I was a math teacher, so we could talk about why algebra might be useful for a shop teacher, but uh, I'm no longer a math <laughs> uh, no longer a math teacher. I'm an administrator now, so I'm actually a director of technology. Oh, very cool. Uh, now, did your did your kids know they or the kids that you deal with on a regular basis know that you're headed out there? And uh, how cool was it? being in the position that you're in in your daily job to know that there's a pretty good chance that some of your kids are tuned in and, and watching what's going on out there. They're kind of, you know, it's, it's pretty cool, but I find it hard in, in a way to get some of the kids. Like it's too much, uh, too much of this stuff. 
yeah. they're on the phones all day and it's hard to get them hooked into something cool. I mean, when I was in the classroom, I'd bring the car, you know, bring, do problems with the car and, and bring real world, real world data in. And that would hook a lot of them, but still it's, uh, they're, they're less interested than you would think, at least in my neck of the woods. Really? Really? No, yeah. Cause I know Pete is big as you probably know, bringing his Vega into his program. Yeah. Um, and obviously um, Carly Wolf uses her car um, a lot as well, even though she, she teaches younger kids. I think she teaches fourth or fifth grade. She brings her, her super street car in, um, her Mustang, and kind of shows it off to them as well to, you know, kind of add a different dimension to it for what they, what you can for, you know, younger kids. It's, it's tougher in that age because, you know, by the time you have their attention, their attention is gone. Right, but, definitely. Well, that's cool, though. I mean, it, it's it's awesome to be able to bring the racing into the classroom, I think. I agree. It, it exposes the kids to more stuff, and, and it also helps the connection with the kids between the teacher. It, you know, it shows you're a person, and the kids feed off of that, for sure. Uh, yeah, you're not just a person sitting behind the desk giving them grades and telling them what they, what they need to do. Exactly. And the weekend you're out there, you know, ripping it up, going 140, 50 miles an hour or whatever in the race car. That's cool. That is very, very cool. So um, how about the people that have helped you with your program throughout the year? So uh, biggest is my engine builder, Joe Turco, Turco's Machine Shop. He's a huge help to, to me and my wife, Stephanie. She races as well. Uh, it's her car right there. Um, Joe's a huge help. We've got three engines that we rotate between the two cars. So we've always got one ready to go and, uh, if I need something done, he helps me out. So he's a huge help. My wife, Stephanie, she's, uh, always supportive. She just walked by saying hi. Um, <laughs> she made the trip with us and, uh, Al and Carol Goth here, of course, for all their friendship and, and yep. uh, borrowed ride. Adam and Jennifer Sharon took the ride out. I should say Hennifer. Um, they took the the ride or the, the flight out to Vegas with us, so that was super cool. Awesome. And uh, yeah, the the crew down home had a party at the Thirsty Fish too, Ben and Michelle, and uh, that whole crew hung out and uh, cheered for us for, for awesome. me and Jeff, Jeff Tisdale, and we had a good time out there too. We got Jeff and his boys down on Fremont Street Saturday, uh, Sunday night, <laughs> so we had a we had a grand time. It was fun. Very cool. Uh, now, what was it like? also kind of having having a little bit of camaraderie with some of your other division one people that were out there not just racing in the bracket finals but that were there you know um again we use like jackie frick dj cox the people like that did you get a chance to talk to them at all you know i've known jackie for a long time but our uh, paths didn't really cross that much out there i i stopped by her pit i think it was saturday morning and, and chatted for about five minutes but but that was it. We were kind of doing our own thing, working on the car I drove, putting that away. And then after that, we were heading back to Fremont Street and uh, we made a vacation out of it, too. Very cool. So let me ask you this question. You, How did you we'll go with how did you get started in racing? And then we're going to we're going to turn it around just a little bit. So how did you get started in racing? So back to my engine builder, Joe, uh, he used to race. I used to help him with his car and uh, I got involved when I was, I don't know, 11 or 12 years old. And then time went by, I got a job and I could afford it. So I got my own. And, awesome. and along the way, I was, you know, I always stayed involved. I was working on different cars, helping out different people and, and all the while learning. So when I got my car, I pretty much knew the deal. I was able to, to jump right in and go. Awesome. I had never been uh faster than 13 second quarter mile before i got the dragster awesome now has um lebanon valley also always been home yep yep i started out at lebanon valley and uh they run a great program and especially great people all the way from from howard commander who owns it and wayne del monte who manages the drag strip i mean they're they're great people the staff there is great and, and the racers are great too i mean so supportive the the outpouring of support i've had after the bracket finals win and during and, and on the way to Vegas and out there, it was really incredible. So fortunate. Awesome. All right. This, this is the plot twist a little bit. All right, race, here we go. You raced, you raced slower cars. You've raced obviously faster cars with a dragster. 
bouncing around inside your head. Somebody throws you the, the key, the proverbial keys, if you will, and says, go for it. What car, what kind of race car is it? What, what really reaches out and grabs a hold of you that you have not tried? Oh, that I have not tried. That you have not tried, yep. Boy, I, I mean, I've always wanted to drive a pro stock car. I think that's like number one. But everybody's going to say that, right? <laughs> like the fuel stuff doesn't really interest me that much. Of course, it's cool. It's got to be fun hitting that loud pedal. But going through the gears in a pro stock car has got to be where it's at. Awesome. Are you looking forward to uh, your, do you already have some plans laid out for 2023? Uh, same old. We're going to run Lebanon Valley points every week and uh, see where it takes us. Maybe, maybe do a trip here and there, but nothing big planned. Uh, mostly going to stay at the track uh, with our track family. I mean, we have such a good time going there and hanging with the crew with that. Um, like I said before, I'm pretty practical. I don't see the the need to, do the whole division one tour. It doesn't make any sense to me to, to travel to all these tracks and pay whatever it is, two thirty to enter now to win 1500 bucks. I can pay 70 to enter and win 1500 bucks every Sunday. So um, to me, the bracket race in the Valley is where it's at. And I'm really hoping and I've been a outspoken uh, against eighth mile racing. We really don't enjoy eighth mile racing and uh, we hope it's going to stay quarter because to me, it's just downright boring. You're like, oh, that button, the car gets in high gear and the race is over. And, you know, people pick on me. So oh, you like it now that you won bracket finals? The answer is no, I still don't like it. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to win and do well, but doesn't mean I like it. I'd rather go a quarter mile, hear that motor sing behind me. Right. Now, obviously, the bracket finals at Maple Grove were eighth mile. And I'm correct in saying when you went to Vegas, you were back to quarter mile. Is that correct? What sense does that make, right? We run all year long quarter mile. Then we go to the bracket finals, it's eighth mile. And then, oh, winner of that, quarter mile again, which I, obviously I welcome. I like, I wanted to run quarter, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You you, you just stole my brainwave because that that's where I was going with it, yeah. I, that makes no sense. You run, like you said, you run a quarter, you know, two thirds of the year. You run eighth mile right at the bitter end and then you're back to quarter mile again. As you made. But I get it. Other tracks in the division are eighth and, you know, other tracks in the country are eighth. And that seems to be the trend, the way things are going. And I don't like it. I mean, my wife says she's done. I don't know that I'm done, but I don't know that I can brace my dragster. I don't know. We'll see. Might, might try cool. something else. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Well, you know, hell of a job representing division one. You know, it was cool that you were able to at least not have to worry about getting your car out there. You were able to strike a deal with someone. Um, but before we, we wrap it up, let's talk a little bit about the three men sitting on your uh, table behind you. <laughs> so we've got a 2017 NHRA TV Challenge, Lebanon Valley. And over here, same thing, 2019 NHRA TV Challenge. And this guy's the biggie right here. Bracket finals, 2022. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. And I also wanted to thank uh, Brandon Manson, KB Chiropractic. He came on both cars this year and, and helped us out and came to the track a lot with us, which was a lot of fun and a big help to us too. Awesome. Very cool. Well, like I said, you know, hell of a job, you know, and best of luck in, uh, 23 and um uh, that wasn't a dig on teachers with with the algebra class <laughs> it's I'm, all I'm, good I'm, I'm somewhat repeating what what was said to me so, that's, <laughs> you, can, yeah, so it's you, you can you can you can get with him next year and you can hash that one out <laughs> do i have to wait till next year well he's not he's not he's not showing up yet so <laughs> i know like i said i know he's got class tonight for at least a couple more weeks so and normally we're on on mondays but i work we're at a um at a boarding school and in the dean's infinite wisdom they came up with another program on monday nights that i have to cover uh, so it is what it is that's life yeah. but i'm glad you get able to come on and hang out with us you know again great job nothing to be 
sad about you know you had it no we had a great time good year and a great experience in vegas the whole thing was was fun and you know it was great to share it with stephanie and adam and jenny too it was uh you know we just had a blast and it's unfortunate that we were out in the first round out there uh but we were competitive you know like you said nothing to nothing to be ashamed of and we'll go back out next year and, and go back after it and see what happens awesome well congratulations jamie and enjoy the rest of the uh 2022 winter time and uh get ready to take it on again in 23 thanks chris thanks for having me nice chatting all right you're very welcome my friend we'll talk to you soon sounds good have a good night all right take care all right jamie diamond was our guest tonight you're one of your reps for uh division one out of the bracket finals in las vegas all right so couple some results to go over and then uh we're going to talk about a little bit of point stuff so you you can hang out if you want you're if you have to go you're good all right all right so this last weekend was the final lucas hall drag racing series event in the whole country and it ended a lot of the races um throughout the country, the points races, I should say. Um, let's go over the, as I have get a visitor in here. Um, hello, hello, visitor. Hi. Goodbye, visitor. <laughs> also known as my wife. Um, top alcohol dragster, your winner, Joey Severance, runner up, Sean Cowie. Top alcohol funny card, Doug Gordon. And the runner up was Chris Marshall. Comp eliminator, uh, taking home the Wally was Doug Lambeck. Runner up, Scott Linder. And super stock, Justin Lamb over Jimmy Hidalgo, AKA Cooter. Uh, stock eliminator, Darren Grossi over Darcy Clark. Super comp, a big shout out to our teammate, so to speak sort of kind of so to speak the flying airbrush of course Jaron settles uh won not only super comp in vegas and took home the wally but he also won the division seven super comp championship so congratulations to Jaron. uh he won over john labus who uh as pete likes to say lit the cherry uh, in Super Comp, excuse me, in Super Gas, Mike Wiblehauser over Pete Both. And Super Street, Kenny Snow over Jess Dale. And I have to pull the rest of the picture up because for whatever reason, my printer and my computer were, were not working well together. Open this up. And again, in Super Street, Kenny Snow over Jess Dale. Top Sportsman, Dean Hall over Lance Abbott. Top Dragster, John Richardson over Philip Durer. Durer. And Sportsman Motorcycle, Jeremy Bates over Justin Willison. So congratulations to everybody. And again, big congratulations to our friend, Jaron Suttles for winning not only the Wally, but the um, Super Comp Championship in NHRA Division 7. Now, other big news. The 2023 Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series schedule has been released. And of course, starting off in NHRA Division One, we're going to kick it off April 14th through the 16th at Cecil County, May 26th through the 28th at Maple Grove, June 9th through the 11th at Lebanon Valley, July 11, uh, July 8th and 9th in New Media, and August 4th through the 6th in Atco. Uh, August 25th through the 27th, New England Dragway, and wrapping up the 2023 
NHRA Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series scheduled for Division One will be in Virginia in Virginia Motorsports Park. Now, the other part of the schedule also is uh, the Cecil County will be a Jags All Star event. Maple Grove Jags All Stars event. Uh, Lebanon Valley 2023 Jags All Star event final. 2023 regional as well. So that is that for Division One. Um, I do have the all of the um, schedules posted on our Facebook page, of course, at Rachel's News Network on Facebook. So if you want to see all the schedules throughout the entire country, be sure to go ahead and check that one out. Put back here. There we go. Uh, 2022 National Open top 15 points for Division One in comp eliminator number one, Frank Aragona Jr. Now we're still thinking about Frank. He's battling some health stuff, but um, he's always number one in our thoughts. So uh, number two in comp eliminator, Frank Affronte. Number three, Peter Diagnolo. Number four, Bobby Martin. Number five, Al Ackerman. Number six, Johnny uh, Ronnie Boyd Jr. Number seven, Joe Carnescali. Number eight, Calvin Hill. Number nine, Todd Logan. And number 10, Steve Zupka. In super stock, number one in points, again, for the PC Richards National Open Series in Division One, Peter Diagnolo. And number one, second, Dwayne Hoven. Third, Marty Reinhardt Jr. Fourth, Kent Hanley. Fifth, Herbie Null Jr. Sixth, Joe Santangelo II. Seventh, Eldon Baum Jr. Number eight, Larry Miller Jr. Number nine, Jimmy Daniels. Number 10, James Evanuk. Stock Eliminator in first place, Barry Parker. In second, James Daniels. Third, Bob Bilaska. Probably pronounced that wrong. I do apologize. Uh, number four, Fred Frank Federico. Number five, Ken Mealy. Number six, Tex Miller. Number seven, Joe Santangelo the second. Number eight, Douglas Hoven. Number nine, Daniel Valance Bel Bellinozzi. Number ten, Kevin Anderson. In Super Comp, in first place, Lee Ream. Second, Jack Sapanic Jr. Third, Kent Hanley. Fourth, Tony Iacono. In number position number five, Howie Smith the second. Six, Joe, Joey Cambria. Number seven, Jeffrey Stricker. Number eight, Blake Sutton. Number nine, Tyson Cowie. Number 10, Jason McNeil. In Super Gas. Number one, Tom Allen. Number two, Darren Wood. In third spot, Hank Smith. Number four position, Jeff Fisher. Number five, Rick Homan. Number six, Bill Nuzzi. Number seven, Craig Porter. Number eight, Vincent Gregoire. Number nine, Don Offrey. And number 10, Vito Bosca. And Super Street, again, NHRA Division One National Open, sponsored by PC Richards. In the number one spot, Carl Trader. Number two, Tori Iacono. Number three, James Cowie Jr. In fourth, Darren Wood. Fifth, Jeff McMillan. Six, Jack Webster. Seven, Wilbert Beach. Number eight, Richard Boyd. Number nine, Bernard Corscadden. Number 10, Charles Coughlin. And top sportsman in the top spot. Jeff Brooks, second place, Kenneth Snopes. Number three's position, Todd Chase, fourth, Lynn Cormier. Number five, David Powell. Number six, it says, I don't know if this is an error or if there's a junior and a senior. Uh, fifth, David Powell. Sixth, David Powell. Seven, Ronald Regal. Number eight, Frank Burrard. Number nine, Douglas Busa. Number 10, David Crafts. 
and rounding it out, top dragster, NHRA, PC Richard sponsored Open Series, National Open Series. David Anthony in first place in top dragster. Second, Frank Genovese. Number three, Alan Kenny. Fourth, Tony Positano. Number five, Brian Toombs. Number six, Doug Rathall. Number seven, Frank Aragona Jr. Eighth, David Bachelor. Ninth, James Beckham. And number 10 position, Andre Brown. So congratulations to everybody in the PC Richards National Open Series. Now, getting to the Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series, top 10 in points. Right here. Check my phone. What's going on? Just news. Nothing interesting. All right. I was told that all of the results in the Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series Divisional points are finalized. Just wanted, I wanted confirmation and I got it. So top alcohol dragster will kick it off. Number one, Jackie Frick. Number two, Karen Stalba. Number three, Mike Hepp. Number four, Daniel Dietrich. In fifth, Tom Fox Jr., who is actually going to be racing in Pomona. So best of luck to Team Fox. Number six, Dwayne Shields. Number seven, Dan Page. Number eight, Dan Mercier. Number nine, Frank Schuster. And 10th position, Rich Bork. Top alcohol funny car, bringing home the championship. DJ Cox Jr., second place, Phil Burkhart Jr., number three, Matt Gill, number four, Dan Pomponio Jr., in fifth, Brian Golick, in sixth, Wayne Morris, in seventh, Ulf Leanders, eighth, Arian Roshan, and number nine, Fred Tiggis, and tenth, Christopher Zagoda. Top sportsman, number one position and champion, Jeff Brooks in second, who gave it a hell of a good run to try and catch him. Uh, Frank Volpe Jr. Number three, Ron Regal. Number four, Robert Fortuna. Number five, Brian Connery in the most badass 63 split window going. Number six, Freddie Perkins. Number seven, Daniel Hill. Number eight, George Forster. Ninth, Robert Stewart, and 10th, Bonnie Mills. Top dragster, the kid who will race anything and everything. Brandon Miller is your champ in 2022 in NHRA Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series, top dragster in NHRA Division One. Number two, Alan Kenny. Number three, Albert Stefiri Jr. Fourth, David Petrovsky. Fifth, Scott Lucan. Sixth, Al Miller. Seven, Chuck Crepella Jr. Number eight, Ken Moses. Number nine, Bob, Bob Batilla. And in 10th spot, Rebecca Miller. In Super Street, this one was pretty much locked up by, uh, I think it was like July. Uh, with a dominating year, of course, you know, people love the Porsche. They love and hate the Porsche all at the same time, but you can't deny that the man is knocking on legendary status. Not only did he win uh, the 2022 Super Street Championship in uh, NHRA Division I Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series, but he also won the championship in the Mid-Atlantic Dot 90 Association Super Street class. So the double up has been completed. Of course, I'm talking about the one and only Keith Mares. Number two, Kyle Bigley. Number three, John Sean Frick. Number four, Jonathan Leahy. Number five, Chris D. Pascal. Number six, Eddie Bloom. Number seven, Larry Payton Sr. And eighth, Scott Lang. And ninth, Neil Vaccaro. And tenth, Thomas Amorosi. Super gas. In position number one and taking home the Big Wally Championship, Rick Homan. Second place, Hank Smith. Third, Jason Kenny. Fourth, Rich Price. Fifth, Michael Handress. Sixth, Frank Pol Frank Volpe, essentially junior. 
Uh, number seven, Thomas Smith. Eight, Tom Stalba Jr. Number nine, Bill Troon. And in number 10, the man, the myth, the legend, the hardest working man in all of Dot 90 racing, the president of the Mid Atlantic Dot 90 Association, Rob Keister. 10th place in Supergas. Congratulations. In Supercomp, Lee Ream is your 2022. Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series champion for Division One. Second place, Mike Robolato. Third, Michael Handress. Fourth, Thomas Smith. Number five, Kent Hanley. Number six, Jeffrey Stricker. And seventh, Ken Moses. And eighth, Amanda Borchesco. Ninth, Tom Hunter Jr. And number 10, Kathy Smulligan. Stock Eliminator. Again, these are all NHRA Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series top 10 points for NHRA Division One. In first place, stock eliminator Joe Santangelo the second. Number two, giving it a valiant try right down to the last event, second to last event. Uh, Shane Oaks. Number three, Bubba Linky the third. Number four, Billy Pyers. Number five, David Barton. Number six, Wallace Dent Jr. Number seven, Matthew Lisa. Number eight, Ken Robinson. Number nine, the legend himself, the one and only Tim Barrett. And in 10th, Bob Conway Jr. In Superstock, the truck takes the championship. Mark Lebrecht, your 2022 Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series NHRA Division I Superstock champion in his beautifully turned out Chevy S10. Uh, Mark Lebrecht, number one. Number two, Byron Warner. Number three, Brian Warner. Why am I not surprised they're one and two, or well, two and three, but they, they like flip position every year. I don't know if they flip a coin and go, who's going to who's gonna end up on first or second or third or whatever this year. Uh, number four, Peter Diagnolo. Number five, Herbie Null Jr., Number six, Bobby Fazio Jr. Number seven, John Canada. Number eight, Sterling Simmons Jr. Number nine, Joe Lisa. And number 10, Dwayne Hoven. In Comp Eliminator for again, NHRA Lucas Oil Dragons Series Division One Championship. Celebrated not only his championship, but his 49th birthday all on the same weekend. Of course, I'm talking about Steve Zupka. Number two, Joe Carnescali. Number three, Frank Aragona Jr. Number four, the man who abandoned everybody and moved to Florida, but he's still going to race up here. Santo Volpe. Number five, Todd Logan. Number six, Michael Costa. Number seven, Scott Benham. Number eight, Calvin Hill. Ninth, Don Eckel III. And in tenth, Gregory Mannix. So congratulations to everybody that finished in the top 10 in NHRA Division One Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series. Also, want to, again, want to say congratulations to Jerron, our, our buddy Jerron, the Flying Airbrush, for bringing home the championship in NHRA Division Seven uh, Super Comp Champ, and again, won the um, Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series event in Las Vegas. And I do believe that he is entered. I will check. He is almost positive he is entered in Pomona. So bear with me for two seconds. I will look. I got two computers and a cell phone on my wireless signal. So it might be just a teeny tiny little bit slow. Let's see. Super comp. Actually, we'll go over all the numbers for super comp. Over all the numbers for Pomona, actually. Let's see. Anybody from our neck of the woods? Jason Kenny, not a surprise. In his 2007, Dan Page is entered in Super Comp for the Pomona of the World Finals. Uh, there he is. Jaron Settles. That's right. He still carries his Division One number as well. Uh, so he is entered in his 2013 race tech um, in um, Pomona for the World Finals. So let's back this up just a little bit. All right, go through the numbers for the last race of 2022. 
In top field dragster, there are 18 entries. Field funny car, 18. Pro stock, 18. Pro stock bike, 18. Top alcohol dragster. Let's see if who from our neck of the woods. All right, who we got? We got Jackie Frick. Tom Fox Jr., Chris Demke. Uh, do, 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 do. I think the, from Division One, that is it, I think. Let's see. Let's go to Top Alcohol Funny Car. 14 entries. Who made the trip? Matt Gill. All Fleanders, he actually finished in the points out here in uh, Division One, the top 10 in points. Uh, Comp Eliminator, 17 entries. Now, let's go, let's do the quota comparison. In Super Stock, the quota of 60, there are 59 entries. Stock Eliminators, again, 60 on the quota for 67 entries. Super Comp, 60, and they got 60. Super Gas, 60. They got 60. Top Sportsman, 36 quota, and they got 34 entries. Top Dragster, 36 quota, and 35 entries. So that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is what it's all about. I want to thank Jamie Diamond for coming on and hanging out with me. Um, Pete was going to try and make it, depending on how his class stuff went, but he wasn't able to, and that is okay. Um, we will be back next Monday night, uh, excuse me, next Tuesday night, um, at seven o'clock via YouTube, unfortunately for a while, uh, and again, until December 19th. And that is just kind of the way it is because the world has gone soft. But if you haven't gotten out and vote, you got about 15 minutes and vote, vote most places to get out there and cast your vote. If you did vote. Thank you very much for getting out and doing your civic duty. Now we can all sit back and watch the fireworks. Thank you, Jamie Diamond. Congratulations on a fantastic year. And best of luck in 2023. Thank you for taking time out of your evening to hang out. Um, I think that's about it. Have a great night, everybody. We will be back Tuesday evening. Take care.